Joe, do you think it's important for you to have a say in who helps you make decisions and accomplish things that you need to do? Do you think it's important for you to have a say in who those people are? Touch my hand or tell me with your voice. Is it important to you to have a say in deciding who the people are that help you with things? Yes. Transition Tuesday. I'm Jane. This is Joe. Um, we are continuing with our series on um, sharing about the process of supported decision making, which is a way of transition planning and adulting where you have a group of people that help you with making decisions. Um, basically, it's uh, supports and services that help a person make their own decisions by using friends, family members, professionals, and other people they trust to understand the issues and choices, ask questions, receive explanations in language that the person understands, and communicate their wishes to others, which is really what people do, what adults do. Um, you know, you go to a lawyer when you need legal advice. Well, in supported decision making, the, the person who is doing the planning, their life planning, in this case, Joe, is making choices about who those support, uh, supportive people are going to be. So we're working with an advocacy group in Georgia called I Decide Georgia. And DECIDE is an acronym for uh, different parts of terms that uh, relate to supported decision making. Um, direct, enlist, choose, inform, determine, and experience. And today we're going to be talking about the first letter, which is DIRECT. Direct um, supported decision making is not doing things on your own. It is directing the people in your life to help you make the decisions you want and need to make. You need to give clear instructions and feedback so what you get, you get what you want. And so we have a, a fabulous graphic artist who is helping us create images to help explain the different parts. So direct, in this picture, this is me, this is Joe, and this is another person. And the uh, conversation bubble says, do you want him to be your doctor? So we're using the, the scenario of choosing a healthcare practitioner as part of our supported decision-making process because we are doing that right now. Joe is shifting from pediatric services to adult services. So one of the things that Joe, that I am helping Joe with is to um, meet doctors. So I um, help him make the appointment. I help him get to the appointment. And Joe and I have had some conversations ahead of time about how, how we're going to communicate when Joe likes a doctor, what is he looking for, you know, what are some things that Joe is looking for when we're making that decision. Is it okay with you if I go over some of those things that we decided? Mm -hmm. Touch my hand or tell me with your voice. Can we talk about some of the ways we decided we would choose a doctor? Yes. So some of the things that we decided were, were does Joe talk to me or does, uh, does the doctor talk to Joe? 
um, when he approaches us. You know, Joe notices when people don't include him in things. So that was one of the things. One of the other things is, um, you know, is he friendly or she friendly? You know, what's their bedside manner like? Um, do they work with other people with developmental disabilities because not everybody does work with this population so that's important you know how do they respond to an, a person like joe who is functionally nonverbal and uses a communication partner do they understand some of the specific needs of somebody with cerebral palsy like joe has things like that and then also are they close by because you know that's nice we, it's nice to have a doctor that you don't have to drive an hour and a half to get to and also the accessibility of their office that was another thing that we looked at so we kind of have this list of preferences and then joe and i you know go over that list and we may not do it with the person present. We may talk about it when we get home. But that's the process that Joe has directed. I ask him the questions and he answers me. And that's kind of how we're making those choices about finding a healthcare practitioner. So we're going to continue along down this decide list. So the very next thing we'll be talking about is enlisting people to be on your supported decision-making team. So we sure hope that you will join us for all of these episodes and learn about this process of decision, supported decision-making. And um, if you have any questions or anything, reach out to us. We'd like to say thank you to the Center for Youth Voice and Youth Choice and Gabby, our fabulous graphic artist. And also I decide your Georgia and Dana and please subscribe to our YouTube channel Transition Tuesdays with Jane and Joe on YouTube and we will see you next time.